once again, are you ready, Dakota? Yeah. All right, we're going to start start over real quick. I want to go back to, all right, when you get to your, when we get to our website, we're going to go to <coughs> our web tiles, our, our lesson modules, refrigeration physics, click on that, pull it up. And then in that page, you'll, we'll have a slideshow. And I'm going to talk through the slideshow. You'll always be able to get back to it in the future. All right. So we have, real quick, for, you guys have already done electrical, and you have done uh, free uh, or uh, flaring soldering. And now we're going to show you how to get one of those units put together and started. And, and of course, Freon is what, is what cools the space and removes the heat. So the first thing that you want to know about is that all matter comes in three basic uh, forms. And we have a solid, a liquid, and a gas. Solids exert energy downward, water to the sides and down, and gas in all different directions. And we are going to work mainly in the heating and air world with uh, liquids and gases. Okay, if, if you remember, water boils at 212 degrees at sea level, and sea level, at sea level, we have 14.7 pounds of pressure on us. So that pot of water at sea level under under heat would be growing to the temperature of 212 degrees and that and that temperature change is going to be a sensible temperature as it hits 212 degrees with this amount of pressure on it we are going to add a little bit more heat at 212 degrees this heat is called latent heat and we are going to change the state of that liquid to a gas at that same temperature so we're going to add just a little bit more heat to that 212. We, it's still going to be 212 degrees, but it's going to start flashing into a gas and boiling. As that happens and it gets past the gas stage, we are going to add more heat, and that is going to be superheat, but that's still a sensible heat. We'll be able to start seeing the temperature change again. Um, but just to show you the difference between water and Freons, refrigerant R22 and 410A are real common Freons for air conditioning world. R22 is actually gonna boil, just like water did, it's actually gonna boil at minus 41 degrees, okay? And in other words, as soon as you open up a Freon can, it is just gonna flash into a gas at 14.7 pounds of pressure at sea level. Um, and, and 410A will actually flash into a gas at 61 degrees. When a, when a liquid Freon flashes into a gas, that's when we absorb heat. So we are going to start absorbing heat as soon as those Freons start flashing into a gas. And in the heating and air cycle, we have got to make that Freon go from a liquid to a gas to absorb heat. And so we're going to talk about that. The, here is a temperature pressure chart. We call it, sometimes we call it a TP chart or temp press. You can get the app on your cell phones or you can always get a temperature pressure uh, chart from the local uh, heating and air supplier and just put it in your wallet. Um, and have it on your truck, or the manifold gauges will actually have that same TP chart on them. But here's an example of what the pressure of a Freon is compared to its temperature. They have a direct relationship. As the pressure increases, the temperature of the, of the Freon is actually going to increase as well. So, uh, and Conversely, as the temperature increases, the pressure is going to increase. And here's, here is, let's just say, here's our temperature scale. At 35 degrees, R22 is going to be 
a pressure of 61.5 pounds of pressure. And at that same temperature, 410A over here is going to be 105 pounds of pressure. Okay, so 410A is the new Freon. It's a safer Freon for the environment. And 410A will actually be a, almost a dangerous pressure on a 100 degree day. You're gonna be working with pressures over 400 pounds, so you have to really know what you're doing when you're handling those Freons. And, and to help us out, every, every service tech is going to have a set of gauges like this, and they're called manifold gauges. And to help us out, we are going to have a temperature pressure chart actually built right into the gauge. So if we have R22, the, the uh, scale is right here, and at 35, uh, 35 degrees, we're going to show the, the same 61 and a half pounds of pressure on here. So when we put our gauges on, we actually started three of the units over at Water Gardens last night, and the pressures came up just right. Now, those units are 410A, and we ended up at about 110 pounds of pressure, and at 110 pounds of pressure, we were at 37 degrees, which is perfect. Even the one in the far corner of the building, we didn't have to add any Freon to. That was almost a, a 35 foot run and the pressure came up just right. It just nailed at 35 degrees on the suction side. So that, there, that just shows you what the differences are though. If those were our 22 units, we wanna see about 61, 62 degree, or 62 pounds on the gauge and that'll be a safe temperature above freezing. Does anybody know why we don't want to go below 30, 32 degrees? Right. As we, we don't want to freeze, if we go below 32 degrees, we're going to start freezing the coil inside. And one of the things that we do in the heating and air world, and we're going to see it on a couple of the, the uh, slides coming, one of the things that we do in the heating and air world is we actually remove heat from the space, but as we're removing heat from the space, that any, any air contains moisture, and heat contains more moisture, and which, which we consider humidity. As that return air comes through that coil, it's not only going to absorb heat, but it's also going to, to remove the moisture out of the air, which we call condensation. So as that coil condenses, it's, it is going to just be removed and it will drain out a condensate drain. So not only are we cooling the space, but we're re removing moisture, which is even better for sensible heat. Um, there's four main components in an air conditioning system, no matter whether it's a refrigerator, an ice maker, a window air conditioning unit, or a split system. They all have these four main components. Um, the heartbeat of the whole thing is the compressor. The whole system uh, relies on the compressor. A Freon compressor is just like an air compressor. It is going to suck Freon back into the compressor and then it is going to build the pressure. It's going to compress that, that gas. So on a suction line, we might take this much Freon and we may compress it into a real small area and we're gonna push it out as a hot gas out of that compressor. When it leaves the compressor as a hot gas, it's going to go right into the condenser coil. Now we have to get rid of that heat. So in other words, all the BTUs of heat that were picked up in the space are going to be compressed and shoved out into the condenser coil. The condenser coil is going to be outside or in a space where it really doesn't make any difference that you're adding that heat. Um, in an air conditioning world, we actually remove quite a bit of heat to the outdoor world. And so the condenser coil will always be in the outdoors. Refrigerator, it may be right underneath the refrigerator. We'll talk about that in a little while. It's not producing so much heat that it's going to add that much heat to your house. So it's, it's a safe place to have your condenser right at the bottom. And so after we remove the heat from that condenser, the pressures are going to remain high. And because of that, at the, lower, at the lower temperature and the high pressures, we will turn that Freon back into a liquid. This stage has to happen to be able to 
complete the cycle. After it leaves the condenser, it's going to go through the metering device, and the metering device is a small orifice that is going to, it's just like a spray nozzle on your hose. If you barely crack a spray nozzle, it almost comes out in a mist, right? Same thing happens when we take that liquid freon at a high pressure and start shoving it through a small metering device. And as it comes out the other side, it's going to drop the pressure so much that it starts flashing back into a gas. And this is where, we, where heat's removed. So we are going to take the liquid freon through a metering device, lower the pressure, start flashing back into a gas. And at this point, we, we are going to work with a latent heat we're going to we're actually going to be spraying a liquid but as the as the warm air returns from the space that you're cooling it is going to continually turn that mist into a gas and as we do that in the evaporator coil is where this all takes place in the evaporator coil as it starts spraying into a gas let's just say 40 degrees on the on the coil after the, after it leaves the metering device as it starts spraying into a gas, that coil will remain 40 degrees. So that is latent heat. The latent heat is changing it from a liquid to a gas at the evaporator. And as, as that return air, let's just say the return air is 75 degrees, as it comes back through that coil, we want to see a temperature drop. We want to remove about 20 degrees of that heat in a good air conditioning system. Let's just Let's just say that your return air is 75 degrees. We want to be able to put a thermometer on your discharge side of that coil and see about 55 degrees. If you see 55 degrees and 75 degrees in, you know you're doing a, a good job. So we have the compressor, the condenser coil, the metering device, and evaporator coil. No matter what component that we're using in heating and air or refrigeration, it's going to be the same thing. Okay, basic AC cycle. Here's an example of a window air conditioner unit. This could be an air conditioning system in your car. It could be an air conditioning system in a, in a refrigerator. It doesn't matter. It's all going to be the same thing. Here's our compressor. That's number one main component. We are going to take the gas that was sucked back from the evaporator coil, compress it, and push it through the condenser coil and we're going to remove that heat to the outside world. Um, as soon as that heat hits the outside, as you all know, heat rises. So we want that heat to be able to rise. We don't want any restrictions. We want to be able to get rid of that heat. As we do, we're going to turn that, that gas, that hot gas that has been pushed out of the compressor, we're going to turn it into a liquid, and we're going to bring that liquid all the way back to a metering device. And this would be an example of a capillary tube, which just is a small, small diameter of tubing. We'll take that copper from a, let's just say, 3 8 inch line down to a 16th. And we are going to drop the pressure as that freon comes out the other side, whether it's a, an expansion valve or any kind of metering device, we're dropping that pressure and it's starting to spray into a gas right here. As it comes through the evaporator coil, we are going to take, in this case it says 75 degree Fahrenheit, Fahrenheit room air. We're bringing that through the coil and we're pushing it out at, well here's a good example, 55 degrees. So we're putting it in at 75 degrees, 